So you've just seen me do the same circuit twice. Once using only wires, and it worked pretty well. And then once with the breadboard. And you might be wondering why bother with the breadboard when the wires worked pretty well. And that's true. The, the wires can work well, and it's a simple way to illustrate it and get used to switches and the whole notion of a circuit. But breadboard offers other conveniences, which you simply wouldn't be able to do with a wire. For example, I've actually... I've actually reorganized this a little bit and I still have the positive channel going into a column with the long leg and the short legs has is is connected to this black wire which is going into the ground channel so it's the same circuit I just changed what holes everything was in and the reason I did that because I still have one two three four holes um, that are connected to the wiring the same way. So actually, this is one advantage you have from a breadboard, which you wouldn't be able to do with wires, is I can plug another LED in here. As long as I have the long leg in the same column as the other leg, long leg, and the short leg in the same column as the other short leg, I now can get two lights going on at a time. And yes, yes, let me just go for it and try to do four. Now at some point, the battery's capacity probably wouldn't be able to handle four lights, but I'm going to try it. Let's really push it and see how many LEDs we can do with this one coin battery. So there, I have four lights all in the same column because the, ener the energy is flowing into this leg and back out to this leg but because I have a switch in it the circuit currently is open and the lights aren't on. As soon as I turn the switch it makes the connection and all the lights come on and when I wiggle this a little bit um, it seems like it's not reliable and it might be because the wiring's just bent instead of soldered um, so that's pretty neat. What if we wanted to add more lights? Now some people would say we can't because we're out of spaces. And recall that I said this part of the breadboard is not connected to this part of the breadboard. However, we can connect it. So I'm going to take out that last one. I'm going to get a couple more wires. And so we can use this last hole. And I don't even have to go to the one directly over here. I can decide to put it over there. And then I'm going to take this wire and put it where the short legs were and put it over here. So now I have room for four more lights. But I gotta make sure that the next set of lights they go into the two columns that I just connected it to. Do 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 do. It's I don't know if it's sticking in fully. Let's see. Oh, something's wrong. Okay, it's not a super strong connection, but I'm going to put a couple more in. So here's the yellow light. Stretch it into those two holes. Now we have yellow. The, light, the legs aren't sticking in very easily. Here's a, a clear light. I have no idea what color this is. It could be green or blue. If it doesn't go on, it might mean it's blue. It doesn't have enough juice. Um, nope, it's another yellow one. So, and really, if I wanted to, <laughs> 
um, I could take two more jumper wires. So, jumper wires that are just male to male, we, we basically call them jumper wires. So if you hear the term jumper wire, it basically just means male to male. But I can jump all the way over here. You know, and as long as I'm keeping up the same relationship of where the long one is and where the short one is, the positive and negative, as long as I keep those in line, we could keep doing this all over the place. However, at some point, we might be asking too much out of the battery. But you can see I've just connected seven LEDs to the same circuit simply with jumper cables so you should experiment and play with that to get a good handle on how you connect stuff on a breadboard okay well we'll talk more we're gonna use a different battery type and talk about what resistors are next